All right, welcome to Seven Season Studios. This lesson comes to us from our course, Affinity Designer, the complete guide to Affinity Designer on the iPad available below. So if you like the course, go ahead and check it out. Other than that, let's go ahead and roll those credits. All right, folks, and welcome back to Affinity Designer. So in this one, we're going to show you how to make a textured intensity brush. And now this is super cool. This is my favorite type of brush to make. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, we're going to create a new file. And again, when you make brushes, I always stress the importance of making a square canvas. I don't know why. It's just something that I do. So I'm going to make a 1,000 by 1,000 pixel canvas. Now, with this, let's go ahead and shrink this down. It is essential that you take the background for an intensity brush and you fill it with black. Step one, fill that canvas with black. All right, now, we're going to use raster brushes in order to make vector brushes. I know, it's an abomination, right? So, we're going to come over here to our raster persona or our pixel persona. We're going to grab some brushes, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play with, oh, I don't know. Let's grab our paints, splats, and splatters, and let's grab splatter 2. Make sure you've got your brush selected here. You see where I'm selecting it. And now let's make it white. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to crank up this size here. And now I'm just going to start putting in some randomness. Now I'm just touching this here, right? Now unless your goal is to make a perfectly uniform brush, you're going to want to take the brush size and alternate it from time to time. So I'll block in some of the big sections. Then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab the ink spatter. And I'm going to kind of texture some of these areas away here. All right, and remember, intensity brushes work on differences between black and white. So black, it conceals, white it reveals. So whatever you put in white is what's going to shine through when you apply the color. So the last thing that I might do here is I'm gonna put in some large spray in order to add in just a little bit more into some of these bold areas. And now I'm thinking ahead here, right? I want a head and a tail. I think that looks pretty good. So in order to do this, we select it, we come up over here, and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to export it. We're going to select the area, but with the background. Make sure that is an absolute must. And let's call this, we're going to go ahead and delete this, we're going to call this spatter2. Because that's the second brush I made. Probably be spatter one for you. Return, hit OK, and I'm going to save it in my iPad under Designer. And by the way, I've included this file in the downloads on this lesson. So now we're going to come over. Let's grab a new document. Oh, not a new program, huh? Let's grab a new document. I've got one right here that's open. All right. And now let's make a new brush. Come over to the Affinity Designer brush section that we you were working with. Let's go ahead, but now we're going to add a new intensity brush. And remember, you had to have a black background for this. We're going to call this Spatter 2. That looks exactly like what we created. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to adjust what's called the head and the tail on this bad boy. You'll see how that changed the brush editor. Now, you could stretch it. You could repeat it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stretch it, and then you can change how it goes around corners. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull it around the corner. I'm also going to allow for size variance. I'm going to set that to 100%. Basically because the way that I draw, I really like to be able to control the opacity and the pressure using my Apple Pencil. Let's go ahead and select black so we can see it really bold, large, and in charge. Let's grab our vector brush. Make sure the spatter 2 is selected, and let's see what happens. 
Now, you see that my opacity variance isn't really happening, or my size variance. I have to make sure brush default is selected. And I've got to make sure that, because it's a line, my line is selected. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. I've got just that little bit of holdover on that thing. That thing looks all sexy beast. And look at that. I can bring that down to almost nothing. That's a good looking brush. So playing with brushes, playing with vector brushes is one of the coolest things to do. So in the next lesson, we're going to give you a challenge and we're going to ask you to create a couple of your own. Notice you used the raster brushes and you're working in intensity in order to tell the vector art exactly what to do. And the reason these are vector brushes, watch this. I can come up and with my move tool selected, I can select any one of these strokes and I can modify the stroke profiles. So if I want that to be bigger, bolder, badder, I absolutely can, folks. It is a huge new wide open world with this thing. All right, folks, that's a little bit on vector brush tools. Very cool, very exciting. And I'll tell you what, as a professional artist, the tools and the brushes that you make will define the art that you create. All right, folks, we'll see you in the next one. Let's get ready for a challenge.